thank you guys. It's such a pleasure to be here. Can everybody hear me? I'm not, okay. I'm not speaking directly into this. I'm, and I don't really use, n normally use notes, but there were so many things that I went through my mind when I wanted to come. Uh, but thank you again for inviting me. It's such a blessing to be here um, and welcoming me and, and my entourage. Let me first explain. I don't typically travel with TV cameras and other things. <laughs> Uh, but when we got Ms. Gant's um, letter inviting me to come speak and saw what you guys are doing and that Soul Fest is an annual event, uh, the City of Columbia, we want to highlight what our citizens are doing. Y'all know we, we turn on the TV all the time. We always see all the, the negative or critical things that go on in our community. And a lot of times people don't highlight the positive things that are happening. And although we know we all recognize African-American history and contributions by notable African-Americans all the time. It certainly is um, a blessing to be able to see uh, seniors doing that continuously in the community. And so uh, we wanted to be able to highlight you and what you guys do um, on our city channel. And so um, so today I actually do feel like a little bit of celebrity because I'm walking around with a, a TV camera and, and so my entourage. But um, we want to thank them for being here and, and highlighting what you guys do. So uh, first of all, I would like to just start and kind of preface my, my comments. When I got Ms. Gant's letter and she talked about and told me that Soul Fest 2019's theme was celebrating notable South Carolinians, uh, of course my mind went to a lot of notable South Carolinians that I wanted to talk about. Um, but if you indulge me a little bit, I'm going to talk a little bit about them, but I'm going to bring it around uh, to really about where we are right now. and and. The, the scripture that the Lord placed on my heart today to share with you guys, and I'm just going to read it, um, and I'm reading from the Method, Message Bible, um, Esther 4.14, and it says, when Hashak told Mordecai what Esther had said, Mordecai sent her this message, don't think that just because you live in the king's house, you're, one, you're the one Jew who will get out of this alive. If you persist in staying silent at a time like this, Help and deliverance will arrive for the Drew Jews from someplace else, but you and your family will be wiped out. Who knows? Maybe you were made queen for just such a time as this. And so I want to take your theme of, of course, celebrating notable uh, African and South, South Carolinians, but also kind of bring it home about such a time as this and how important all of us role is um, for such a time like this. Um, when I started thinking about uh, the really strange, if I can say, strange time we're in right now, and I mean, we've got things like, we've got notable South Carolinians like Congressman Jim Clyburn, who is majority whip in, in U.S. Congress. He is the third most powerful Democrat, the most powerful African-American Democrat in this country right now. Uh, we think about um, last night with the Oscars, we got Chadwick Boseman, you know, South Carolinian, um, who, um, and, and the Black Panther is the highest grossing, um, highest grossing um, uh, superhero film, not even African American, but superhero film in this, you know, in this country. And so you think about his recognition and what he's done uh, as a South Carolinian. And then you think last night, uh, the Green Book won Oscar. Um, and I had the honor uh, last month, or yeah, in January, to go because the Smithsonian actually came to Columbia, South Carolina, and we are highlighted in the Smith Smithsonian's documentary regarding the real life Green Book. Um, and we had Majeska Simpkins, who had a hotel here in Columbia that was listed in the Green Book, as well as se several other um, places in South Carolina are listed in the Green Book. And the Smithsonian came here and premiered their documentary here at the State Museum and highlights uh, uh, Majeska Simpkins. So we've got some huge um, notable South Carolinians have played a, a tremendous role and are continuing to play a tremendous role in history in this country, black history, but just the history of this country. Um, but then you also look at, you've got, you turn on the TV and you see people with blackface and you see people using nooses either as a joke or, you know, to intimidate other folks. You have, just last week I saw, and I'm not sure if you guys saw this, there was a elementary school in Rock Hill 
where the children were asked to play slaves and pick cotton as part of a Black History Month play. Um, and so, you know, it, we are really in a very, uh, like I said, strange time right now because as we celebrate our history, we are also reminded that history, if we are not careful, can repeat itself. And so for me, it is so important that you um, are here celebrating Soul Fest 2019, celebrating our history, looking at what you as the seniors in this community, what role you play. And I want to challenge you to think about your role for such a time as this. And I want to challenge you and offer to you that your history locally and your personal history um, has prepared you for such a time as this, for us to help prepare our next generation for what they are dealing with. So I wanted to, of course, as a, an elected official, as a politician, I have to share with you, and, and Ms. Gant put in her email, to talk a little bit about the role of seniors as it comes to civic involvement, volunteerism, and definitely in voting rights. And so I couldn't, I couldn't um, bring this remarks without kind of just making sure that I point out to you guys the latest statistics regarding the involvement of seniors in our electoral process. So for nearly 40 years, the turnout of voters over age of 45, but more significantly over the age of 65, have outpaced the younger Americans. In the 2016 presidential election, um, nationally, 71% of Americans over the age of 65 voted compared to 46% of people ages 18 through 30. And that is nationally. Here locally, and I pulled the local statistics, in, in Richland County alone, 75% of senior citizens, those over 65, voted in the 2016 election, as opposed to 44% of those under the age of 35. So clearly, seniors are playing a more important, or not that more important, seniors are playing a bigger role in electing the folks that represent us. And so, as I can say here in Richland County, you guys are our saving grace, because I always tell people, I think I live in a, a, the same sea in the midst of a really crazy ocean um, when you think about South Carolina. So locally, we, we have played a really important role. Um, and of course, it's, it's not um, lost on us. The reason that probably is, is because that you guys have lived through segregation, you've lived through integration, you've lived through civil rights and have a more personal connection to that. And so it also lets me be reminded, especially as a mother of young children, how the more and more our children and our people are removed from that personal connection to what we went through to have the right to vote to have the right to live where we want to, shop where we want to, the more we are removed from that, the less they understand the significance of that. And that may be why we have so many people under 35 not voting, not participating in the electoral process, not volunteering, not making sure that they're reaching out to our most vulnerable citizens. Um, and so it, it makes me think that when we think about such a time as this, what role can we all play to make that change? Now I'll give you a little bit of bright light in that is, now when you look at the statistics, there are so many young people under the age of 18, so they're not able to vote yet, but under the age of 18 who are more involved in the process. And I just look at just me personally, my 13 year old, she is so involved. Um, now, of course, she has two parents who are elected officials, so I don't think she has a choice. Uh, but she, even stuff that we don't offer her to participate in, she's itching to get involved. I mean, last year she, she participated in the March for Our Lives. She spoke at Peace Day at the, the State House. She goes and volunteers on Saturday mornings to help, help the homeless and give out blankets. And so all of this is stuff that she has said my, herself, Mommy and Daddy, this is what I want to do. Not anything we've asked her to do. And it's not, she's not alone. She has a group of friends that this is what they do. Um, just funny enough, my, um, 
my husband was laughing because, you know, with kids, you got to be careful. So periodically, we just take her phone and look through it just to make sure things aren't happening. And so we had her phone, and my husband was like, look at this. And we just saw a text from one of her friends, and this was the day that the president declared the national emergency for the wall. And her friend, another 13-year-old, says, texts her and says, our president is an idiot. <laughs> And it was like, and so there was this, this group chat, they had gone back and forth talking about the wall and whether or not that was constitutional and what that meant to immigrants and how we're all immigrants. It was just amazing to see their dialogue. They weren't talking about boys. They weren't talking about the latest fashions. They were talking about civic engagement. And so that to me is our light. But then somebody asked me, they said, so why do you think, other than the fact that her parents are elected officials, why do you think that she's so engaged? And so I had to think about kind of things that her, my husband and I do with her to keep her connected to, again, the things that she's separated from because she has no personal experience. And so um, I, I think about, um, and I tell her a lot about my very first election back, back in 2002. And again, seniors played a huge role in getting me elected and where I am. Um, I think about, you know, I mentioned Congressman Clyburn, but I spoke to Congressman Clyburn and I used to volunteer with him and he got me engaged. Um, uh, former um, Chief Justice Ernest Finney, uh, bless his soul, uh, when I first got to law school, he would share with me stories about his fight and, and the, the clients he represented and what he did in South Carolina to be a voice for those people who were voiceless. Um, I think about locally, um, uh, Mrs. Ethel Bolden. I, when I was growing up, I went to Northminster um, Presbyterian and I used to sit with Mrs. Bolden and, and um, honestly, as y'all know how kids are, you know, we go to church, we're not really listening, we don't quite, quite understand the sermon, but she would bring books and we would sit on the back pew and she would let me read and the books were about African American history and notable African Americans and South Carolina history and so that was my connection. Um, I think about Adele Adams and Mildred McDuffie, two women who uh, paved the way for me to be in the seat I am because both of them ran for city council before me at large and although they did not win, they let people know, they let me see as a young black girl that black women can run at large even though people were telling me I couldn't do it. And so I always tell her and share with her those stories, but then I also give her the opportunity to connect with those people in our community. Um, she, she, can, she goes and she volunteers with Congressman Clyburn, uh, Don Frierson at the Urban Scene, who is a wealth of information and knowledge. She will listen to the Urban Scene and she'll talk to Don about, you know, what he does and what things are happening. She talks to the seniors at our church and they tell her and connect with her about uh, South Carolina, particularly Columbia history. And so she knows, she knows the struggle. And so when I think about that, and I think about the role and what has prepared you ladies and gentlemen for such a time as this, is that history and that unique history that you can share with our young people. You can go and volunteer in our parks and talk to the kids and read to them and let them hear your personal story. I know so many people think the kids don't wanna hear it, but I'ma tell you, kids don't wanna hear it from their parents but they want to hear it from you. They want to hear it. They're, they're fascinated. They're fascinated to hear about those things. And so if I can just leave you, you know, go to a Baptist church, I got to leave you with three quick things, three quick things um, that I want to offer you guys as far as, as we celebrate our notable South Carolinians. It's great to have the Chadwick Bozemans and the Jim Clyburns and the Majeska Simpkins. But more importantly, we have you. You all are notable South Carolinians. You are notable Colombians. And you play an important role in investing and pouring into the lives of our young people so that they are prepared for such a time as this. You've been prepared. You're war tested and you've been on the battlefield for far, far too long. And it's time that we engage and energize them to be on the battlefield. So the three things that I just kind of wanted to leave you with is think about your personal story, your personal history. 
what you've experienced and how those experiences can teach your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, the children in the church, and share those stories with them. Share those stories so that they can be energized and engaged and understand that they stand on your shoulders and that they have a role to play, even if they can't vote yet, even if they can't drive yet, they can play a role. They can be a part of the history um, for the next generations. The second thing I wanna encourage you to do is think about how to memorialize your stories. As someone, um, and I was, last week, many of you know, um, our community lost a giant in Harold White. And I've known Mr. Wright all my life. Like I said, I used to go to Northminster. When I went to Northminster, he went there. Um, and I've known his daughters for all of my life. And I always knew his story about you know, being the first African-American to the USC's athletic program. Um, and he used to actually work with um, Thomas Martin when I used to go to the program that Mr. Martin had at, at USC. But as a young person, I didn't quite understand the significance of all of that. And then last week when I was reading his bio and I was hearing people talk about him, um, and there were so many things, I was like, wow, that's just an amazing, amazing local history. And some of it has been memorialized, but some of it was just all word of mouth. Um, but as I think about how our kids get older and how, um, and how we get older and how some of us, um, of course, won't be here forever to share our stories, we need to figure out a way to memorialize those stories. And so I want to challenge you to memorialize those stories, either writing them down, thinking of things. Um, I, I even share personally, my great-grandfather, and, and some of you in, uh, here may know that story, but my great-grandfather... Um, was the custodian at Waverly School. And years ago, I was just trying to pull information and I had someone at USC help me pull some information about when you know, my, my grandmother and all her, her 14 brothers and sisters lived in the little house, the custodian house on the property at Waverly School. And we couldn't find like pictures and information. We just couldn't find that stuff. And so my aunts and uncles, they had some stuff and we were telling, I was like, we need to keep this because my children and my children's children need to be able to have that. And so for your own personal history, figure out how do you memorialize it? Put your stories in writing, keep some pictures, even go on recording and record your own voice on your experiences because I can tell you that will mean so much to young people as they get older and they're looking at their own personal history. And last but not least, um, so that was, um, of course, understanding, sharing your history, memorializing. And last but not least, I want to ask you to engage um, not just, when I say young people, not just people who are young, young, but people like me as well. People who are um, in your circles, in your church, in your community, and engage them and challenge them. Let them know how appreciative you are of the role that they're playing, but also challenge them to step up. Because I'm gonna tell you, we're not stepping up like y'all did. We're not stepping up like y'all did. And sometimes you need just that nice little nudge from the mothers and fathers of your church to challenge you to do more, to do better, to keep pushing, keep striving. So I wanna challenge you to find those young people and give them that challenge because we want to be able not only to stand on your shoulders, but we want to make you proud. We want to highlight your history and let you know that we appreciate everything that you've done. But honestly, some of us don't know how to do it. So I challenge you to do that. So as I close, um, I just want to thank you for what you guys do. I want you to thank this church uh, for the role it plays not just here in the, the C.A. Johnson cluster and, and Barnwell Road, uh, but in our community. And I want to um, honestly help ask you to remember that black history, yes, we're celebrating Soul Fest, we're celebrating this month, but we got to keep this conversation going. We got to keep it going because the more and more our people get removed from what's happening, we're going to see more black face. We're going to see more hateful stuff. Um, and people feel, um, I mean, they don't, they've lost hope. 
people have lost hope. And they see things on the news, they hear things coming out of Washington and the White House, and they're like, well, I can't make a difference. But if you guys felt that way when you were younger, that they, you could make a difference, I wouldn't be standing here right now. So we all need to understand that role um, and continue this conversation and continue encouraging um, our friends and our neighbors, our children, our grandchildren to celebrate black history, to be black history, and to stay on the battlefield. Thank you so much for inviting me. Good day, God bless, and I just appreciate everything that you guys do. Thank you.